Thank you for joining us here today on Hill Country Happenings News Minutes. Last Tuesday at Luncheon with Books, Ann Webster got a few of her friends of the library to help her read some of the letters that she had gathered for her book, Mississippians in the Great War. Now these letters told of circumstances of the soldiers, of what they had to face when they were in training and while they were in war. And we have a clip of that later in Hill Country Happenings, but we have most of the program that will be showing later um, at night during the week. So we hope you enjoy that. Thursday was Biscuits and Jams Farmer's Market. Now there's only one more market night to go, y'all. The market goers enjoyed the music of Jimmy Holmes, who goes by the nickname of Duck. He told of a story of how his mom has started the cafe called the Blue Front Cafe because she wanted to show her children there was a different way to make money besides farming. Unfortunately, we, did not, we do not have his interview because we had some technical difficulties, but this might give me an excuse to go to, to the Blue Front Cafe to interview him. We will be playing some of his music during the market show today, so we hope you enjoy it. It's really good. And we want to offer congratulations to one of our local Air Force service people. Erica Hearn recently achieved the rank of E5, which for those of us that aren't, don't know military ranks, it means she's now a staff sergeant. Erica, who is the daughter of Virginia and Dwayne Derrick, hopes to make Air Force her career. And she has also been able to use this opportunity in the Air Force to continue to help others. She did a lot of volunteering when she was here at home too. Now, she feels that the volunteer work is very important because it makes people feel like they are part of the community and it also gets them involved with the service people. Well done, young lady. We're very proud. Now, Friday night here in New Albany was Nifty 50 Car Cruise. There were over 60 cars from the 1950s to the 1980s and they gathered together here in New Albany and they went cruising around town. They went around Sonic and they went around bumpers and then they came back across the bridge and they were parked over at the Biscuit and Jam market area. Now lots of people came out and checked out the cars and a lot of car enthusiasts were there to, to speak to the drivers to find out what they had done to the car, what's the, the motors and everything like that. And we interviewed some of them, the car owners that is, and we have got some of those interviews right here on Hill Country Happenings for today, and we'll have a full show later. Now, there was lots of happening in this area this week, and we had music, and we had, we had music in the plaza, we had the cars, we had music at the market. We would love to be able to share other communities' news, so be sure to follow us on Facebook, go to our Instagram page, and follow us there and go to YouTube and subscribe. Now we have archives of, of our shows on YouTube, so you can watch um, past shows of the Patton Allen Show and County Flack and From the Heart and just different things like Museum Moments and the libraries. Now be sure and check out our website too at hillcountrynetwork.net. You can find our email contact and you can find our phone number to call us, which we have here on the screen too. And we at Hill Country Happenings are growing along with Hill Country Network. And we cover the whole North Mississippi area. So if you have something going on, give us a call. Go to YouTube, watch some videos, and subscribe. Go to our website, which is beautiful. Y'all need to check it out. And we hope you have a wonderful week. I opened those doors for 40 years, going on 49 years, and the, and the state is going to celebrate the 70th anniversary September the 21st, And if you ever down that way, and, if, and if you ever take a look at it, or you can go on the internet and pull up the Blue Farm Cafe in Victoria, Mississippi. It's 99% original. The only something I did to it was put in some inside plumbing, so you know what that means. But anyway, I'm gonna take a short break and I'll be with you until 7 p.m. Long, so long. Yes, I think I better go.
My name is Cheryl Cannon. Today I have my grandchildren that are visiting for the summer. This is Travion, this is Zion, and this is Anaya. They're from Chicago visiting with us, yeah. I live in New Albany now. I retired and relocated. I live in New Albany, yes. We've been here like 10 years. Bows all sizes. We have small bows, we have medium bows, and we have large bows. We have strawberry lemonade. If you've never had strawberry lemonade, you need to try some strawberry lemonade. Okay, hello, my name is Trevion. This is my little sister, Anaya, and my younger brother, Zion. And we are here for vacation, actually, and we decided to come out here and sell bows and Rice Krispies for $1.50. And with all the money that we actually earn, we'll be donating it to our church to, um, you know, fund for newer books and for decorations and just want to bring them out so they can get more, you know, social skills and learn, you know, the trade of talking to people and selling. We hope you all have a good summer. We hope you have a good summer. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> and in peacetime has more traffic than any other place in the world. At one end of it, the opera house, the steps of which will hold about a thousand people. All of this place was packed and the whole crowd sang the Marseille, their national anthem. The police stood on the corners in bunches of 10 and 12 and laughed as they tore up what they wanted to. They dared not interfere. After five years of this horrible war and their capital threatened twice, 2,500,000 French killed not casualties, but killed, don't you think they have a right to celebrate? Mama, it makes me feel so bad when I think of these good old Americans that we must leave in France, but they haven't died for nothing, thank God. And I got my share of the Bosch, that's, I guess, the Germans. And avenge the death of some of my dear friends that I have seen go down in the battle like true American heroes. We all have done some things to the Bosch that might seem dishonorable to the average citizen, but the Bosch deserves all of what we gave him. Maybe you think your son isn't glad that it is all over, but I am tickled to death to think I don't have to sleep in a cracker box under the ground and wade in muddy trenches up to my knees this winter. Just makes me happy as if I had good sense. <laughs> Honestly, this letter was published in the Crane Ledger in Jackson, December 22nd, 1918. Uh, Dear Daddy, at last there is no more censorship on our mail, for as you know, there is no more German high sea fleet. That at least is one thing that will go down in history, and I can very proudly say that I was certainly right there. I expect that you have read various accounts of it, come back to the surrender, but I will try to give it to you just as anyone <coughs> would see it from the inside. Last Saturday uh, is one of the worst fogs ever seen. The German Admiral came in, into the Firth of Fourth on Royal Oak and immediately went aboard the Queen Elizabeth, the flagship of the Grand Fleet. What happened, what happened aboard is not known. But it was arranged that 15 A number one ships would surrender on the 21st day of November. In the morning of the 21st, all hands were called at 3 a.m. as we were to go out about 100 miles to meet and escort them <clears throat> into the Firth of Forth, where they were to anchor and lower their colors. At 9.10, we first met them, and all hands were battle stations with ammunition up and in the guns. So if they were to be any treachery on the part of the sun, we would be prepared. But they showed no signs of any hostility, and as soon as secure, all men were on the top deck with the Kodaks. That's cameras for you young people. <laughs> it was certainly... It was certainly one of the most humiliating scenes I ever saw. But when you think of what they had done, you have no pity for them. They anchored just about a mile from where we were 
and the men and his officers were sent back to Germany on a transport that same day. It has now been one year less two days since we steamed out of Lynn Haven Road for foreign service. So you see I am entitled to wear two gold service stripes. That is one more than the soldiers out of our family will have. If you will get a large map of the British Isles, you will see in the most northern part, Oakney Isle, where there is a place where we were all last winter. It is without a doubt the most dismal place in the world. Nothing to see but small mountains covered with snow, and it gets so rough that at times they would have to get up steam to keep from going into the rocks. No liberty of any kind is theirs but one place there. So you see, I have seen the British Isles from the most northern part to the most southern part. All last winter, our job was to convoy the merchant ship from here to Norway and Sweden and to go out with the <clears throat> mine layer so that if the Germans did come out, we would be there. Let me tell you something. Some think that the men in the Navy get away with it, but they do not. For a while we were out, <clears throat> while we were out, we stood watch 20 hours on and four hours off. As many as three days. But he keeps my hands satisfied, you know he keeps my hands
and here's someone else that you're going to enjoy. Tell us your name. My and name is Willa Frank Hayes. I'm from Ural, Benny. 814 Wood Deer okay. here in Ural, All right. And tell us about your car. And I, I used to work for the bowl in the Hick Flat. And so they called me one night and told me to come up. And this is what I had my baby right here. He gave it to me, free of charge. Somebody, who was it that gave it to you? Gladys Bowling. Okay. Her and flat. She, just, she just had it and she knew you wanted it. And it was she just knew a. I wanted it and I worked upon And she picked me and gave it to me. That, and I'm so proud of it. I know you I are. Do. Yeah. And how long have you had it? I haven't had it about a year. About a year. It's a, uh, okay. And what kind of car is it? What year and make? It's an 83 model. Okay. It's a Lincoln Continental Bahama. You can't find them no more. Really? <laughs> no. Okay. I done searched everywhere. This, this, this is what the last one they made. Just like yes, eight or three miles. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, you have something special then. Have you always liked classic cars? Like, I mean, or oh, old? I always liked an old car. Oh, we always did. And this was like one of your favorite styles? Yeah, favorite style right here. And somebody gave it to you? We gave it to me. And that made me want it more and more then. Sure did. That is so nice. Do you like working on them yourself or do you have someone else to? I would, I would if anything happened to it, I'd do it myself. Oh, that's good. Yeah, the only thing I put on it when I got it was a water pump. And everything, the new tires and everything on it when I got it. She put all that on it before I got there. That's awesome. She's a good person. She's nice. Really. And uh, did you drive this car a lot or do you just drive it in shows? I just drive it just for show. Okay. I just don't drive it all the time. Just for show. Oh, drinks a lot of gas. Easy on gas. Okay. Yeah. Easy? Easy on gas? Easy on gas. Oh, that's great. It's Such a big car. Right? Yeah, it's nice on gas. Okay. Yeah, this is my baby. This is baby. Home to stay. Home to stay. <laughs> Home, you're not going to get it from him, so don't even ask. <laughs> well, is there anything else you want to share with us? Oh, that's it. That's it. I'm just proud of it and glad that you and me to give it to him. I'm glad you have it. Yeah, thank and you. I thank you for talking to us. All right. And now I'm with Mr. Travis Kitchen. So tell us where you're from and what kind of car you drive. Well, I live in Guntown, Mississippi. But I work here for the City of New Albany Water Department, Water and Sewer Department. Oh, okay. And uh, brought a 1957 Chevy two-door sedan. It's, it's pretty. It's running a 283, Power Pack 283 out of a 62 Corvette with a Muncie four-speed. And it's very fast. Very, I like that. I like fast cars. It's very fast. <laughs> and I did it all myself. This was the first car I painted myself. Wow. And uh, I do all of my own work. This one has actually got about 15 years on this paint job, You're and I drive it everywhere. It's but a, it's it's amazing. This is this is one of 25 car antique cars that I have. Oh, okay. Oh, you're a pro at well, this. Well, I do I do all my own work, okay. and uh, I still have a 41 Ford Coupe that I've been driving since I was 18, and I'm 63 now. So do the math. Wow, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. I get into the old cars. I have a 54 Chevrolet that I brought my oldest son home from the hospital when he was born. My second son, I brought him home in that car. And then they have each brought their sons, my two grandsons, home when they were born in that car. Wow. That's, that, now, that's a story we haven't heard tonight. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, so are they, do, they let, do they like cars, too? Are oh they yes, into class? Yes. My sons, both of them. Uh, my oldest son has a uh, 68 Charger with a 440. Uh, the youngest son takes more after me as far as having multiple cars. He's got a 66 in Paula Super Sport, big block car, uh, 71 Chevrolet short wheelbase pickup, uh, 78 short wheelbase pickup. Uh, he's, he's a car guy. Do you have one favorite car or, or do you just kind of like them all? I like them all. Uh, I love the 57 Chevys. I've got eight different body styles of them. Uh, two, two years ago, I had three of my high school buddies from California flew out. We got in a 1957 Chevy four-door station wagon and took old Route 66 back to California. Stayed in all of the original hotels like the Wigwam, ate in all of the original diners. Now, we should have been along for the ride so we could have photographed oh, that. That was a fantastic ride. If you ever do anything like that again, you better let us know. Well, I'm planning, I've got a 57 Chevy convertible in the shop right now that I'm getting ready to put an LS1 motor in. And next year, the plan is to go to San Diego and take Pacific Coast Highway all the way up the coast of Canada, 
swing back to Mount Rushmore, Deadwood, and then back here. That's my kind of trip. Yeah, but these old cars, they're made to drive. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I've asked a lot of people if they drive them or just, you know, just or just come to car shows, but this, a lot of them drive. Been to the coast, uh, Panama City, Daytona Beach, uh, Vicksburg, just anywhere I get ready to go, it's ready to go. That's great. It doesn't look like it's been out of the factory. It looks beautiful. It's a beautiful well, it was just car. Old rusted hunk of junk when I bought it and got started on it. Wow. And uh, well, it's beautiful. And thank you for coming. And I hope you come back in October oh, when we. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be here. In fact, I may be doing the music for them. I do music at car shows, too. So, cars are my life. Okay. And everything. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, you, thank you for talking to me. Anytime. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I'm just a bashful guy that don't like to stand out too much. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I doubt that. <laughs> so, what you got here, Bobble? A 64 Chevrolet pickup. Yeah. It's an old beater. Bobby Harrelson. That's your trip. It's a 1964 model Chevrolet pickup. Got a 350 in it. A few modifications. And I just think it's in a working project. Is this your truck? Hey, this is my papa's. Your papa's truck. Hey, papa. <laughs> Ooh, too fun. Thank you. Here you go. Oh. Say thank you. Thank you. Say bye. Bye. Oh, well, bye. Say bye. Say bye. Say bye. <gasps>